What's up, guys? This is Crypto with James. Happy New Year. Uh, so I'm talking about Energy Web Token today because this is um, a project that, you know, well, I'm not uh, particularly bothered about, you know, renewables and everything and sustainable energy in in an investment sense in terms of it doesn't excite me. All governments are transitioning towards a new new targets. Energy Web Token has been shouted out by one of well the single biggest company in the world, um, and I think with the I think it's as a long term hold is probably a very very good one, um, and I'll and I'll explain why. Oh, and also we're at the end of we're in a new year, so I want to look at the stories of twenty twenty two. You know the big VCs, uh, big investments that entered the market, along with maybe some of the lessons learned over 2022 from some of the events that happened. Uh, before I get into that, though, if you are new to the channel, these are the first 26 coins that I spoke about when I made this channel, and they were the ones I owned when I made this channel. Um, had you just put in 100 bucks into each of these coins when I released videos about them, and then you ignored them for two years, you did everything wrong as an investor, you would be in profit for 6.3k. And that's doing absolutely everything wrong. If you'd sold these coins last year like I did, well, though when the markets absolutely rocketed up, $100 into each, $2,600 investment would have netted you a profit of 123 grand. That is the difference between doing the right and the wrong thing. Now, as I said, I sold these off. So if you want to see the coins that I own right now, you can go to coppermycrypto.com. On that site, I share my portfolio. Uh, I let the members know every time in real time when I buy or sell a coin. We have tutorials set up uh, for the members that are brand new to crypto so that they can learn and get involved. And as we have a history of success on the channel, on the site, not least of which, you know, no one in 2020 spoke about Phantom. I did a Udemy course literally dedicated to it. It was called the best cryptocurrency investment of 2020. I said it would 100x or more and it did 677x. So if you'd have put in a grand, you'd been able to buy a very nice house, but two grand would have made you a millionaire. You'd have netted 1.3 million. I will find another phantom. And when I do, I will jump onto the site. I will tell the members about it. I'll tell them what gains I think it can have, what percentage of my holdings it's going to be. They can copy along if they want. Same thing. If that sounds interesting to you, if that sounds appealing to take the work out of it for yourself, and just copy along and go to the site now. Um, and read through. And remember, everything that you read on there can be verified on their YouTube channel's history. Um, so, Energy Web Token. Currently priced at $3. Bang on. So, Energy Web uh, is the token behind the Energy Web chain. This is a blockchain based uh, virtual machine. The whole premise of it is to support and further uh, application, uh, further develop the energy sector. Now, they're a non-profit enterprise um, and they've aimed to bring diversity to the energy sector with, you know, multiple different dApps. Um, this is a project create, created by the Rocky Mountain Institute and Grid Singularity. Now, if you're not familiar, the Rocky Mountain Institute is a massive name in uh, research and development for the energy sector. Uh, Grid Singularity uh, brought, brought blockchain expertise to the project. Um, and they are, they have developed the, uh, energy web chain. Now, what really I find particularly interesting about this is look, their, their premise is to build, um, and push the decarbonization solutions around the world. Um, and decarbonization solutions are something that every country is starting to look at, uh, because of global governmental targets of like bringing net or bring, getting out to net zero or whatever by 2030. As a result, decarbonization is a real big push. Um, so Energy Web Token have created a few different things. They've got real world examples of how companies are using their tech to achieve decarbonization. So some of them are utilizing, I want to get to that, but um, there's energy demand and generation exchange. So that's just, you know, a peer to peer. You can do peer to peer networks. You've got data exchanges here. Um, and this one in particular is about renewable EV um, 
charging. So the green charging solution allows anyone to acquire proof that energy purchased for charging an electric vehicle comes from renewables. If that happens, you you know what you can then utilize is obviously um, the what's it the trading solutions as well. So the green charging solution can be used by corporations, and the proofs are then backed by like what's it uh, government subsidies and stuff like that. So these little approaches are working very very nicely. Um, now energy web token hasn't boomed or grown enormously, you know, but it's a market gap of 90 million, so it's nothing to sniff at. Um, and, you know, they're utilizing asset management tools as well for tracking, um, to, again, approach the decarbonization solutions. Um, but they go through green proofs, asset management, data exchanges. They're the three solutions that they're really focused on. But by creating electricity markets, it means that fundamentally, you can minimize the amount of uh, excess electricity created um, because any spare electricity that one person or one corporation, or one area owns can be sold off to another. And as a result, you're then minimizing the complete outgoing, uh, the complete creation of electricity around the spaces that you're in. Um, I'm, I'm intrigued by this as an approach. And I do think, it's this and um, what's the other one? Power Ledger um, are the two energy solutions that I, that are I'm finding quite interesting. Um, and there are a lot of projects that are working with Energy Web, as you can see. You know, you've got um, blockchain decarbonization uh, partner Ripple. You've got uh, Project Symphony, the partner is the Australian energy market operator. You've got the Aust Austrian Power Grid as a partner uh, with APG Flex Hub. You know, they, they've got, they are starting to grow reasonably substantially now in terms of uh, partners. Now, what would be good is that we start seeing them onboarding more and more and more big, big energy partners like here, Shell. Huge, huge partner. Um, so in light of increasing interest for highly granu uh, granular renewables, accounting and sourcing, Energy Web is in cooperation with Elia, SB Energy and Shell to, and developed a 24-7 software toolkit um, that can be utilized. So again, um, I'm, you know, if they can start partnering and providing solutions for some of the biggest, and that's a big ask. But if you can nail, if you can provide solutions that are utilized by your shells, your BPs, you know, <clears throat> all these massive energy companies, how does it not grow? And it fundamentally, it will contribute toward, it can contribute, whether or not it will with governments, but it can contribute towards decarbonization targets the governments are setting. Um, not saying it will be successful in terms of governments hitting their targets. I'm not particularly concerned about that. Um, to be honest, I'm more just talking about it from a from a what can happen if they do that. So if they partner with governments that and help governments achieve their targets, it can skyrocket. If they provide solutions that are utilized by your shells, your BPs, and everyone else, it can skyrocket. And then factor in, you know, BlackRock gave the project a shout out. Now, this was you know August of this past year, but it jumped twenty five percent off the back of that news. So um, it was mentioned in a BlackRock press release. So the release detailed BlackRock's plans to create a spot Bitcoin private trust for US institutional investors before praising Energy Web's potential to introduce less environmentally damaging Bitcoin mining strategies. Um, so they're presenting a potential solution for EWT. Uh, BlackRock has encouraged that organizations such as RMI and Energy Web are developing programs to bring greater transparency to sustainable energy usage in Bitcoin mining and will follow progress around those initiatives. So they're saying they're keeping an eye on it. They are. And BlackRock, you know, that might that could very well, let's be let's use skeptical heads. That could very well have been BlackRock putting a bit of money, a few million into Energy Web before they did a press release. That happened and then they banked the money. That could have happened. 
right? Could have been a little, you know, market manipulation. Or they are legitimately watching it. Either way, they've brought it up once before. There's a shout. There's a possible, certainly a possibility they'll bring it up again. If it ends up being one that they've invested in as well, there would be a big clamoring for energy web. So I don't think it's one worth sleeping on because fundamentally it's a solution governments have to introduce if they want to hit targets. And it's more about perception around the real around the rest of the world than a real concern. I think any legit that any government actually has. But energy web can, you know, the potential is a speculative thing because it is potential. But they've grown, they've been shouted out by BlackRock. They've worked, they've worked with Shell, provide, you know, creating toolkits. If they can onboard, they're working with some uh, government grids. If they onboard more government grids, if they go partner with governments, if they partner with, you know, the biggest in uh, industry leaders in energy, or if BlackRock shouts it out again, there's all these three things can all happen in the next bull cycle, which, you know, we're probably looking at 2024, but any of those three things happen during a bull cycle, instead of moving 25%, it would move 200%, 300%. And it would probably have already rallied very, very nicely by that point anyway. So even if it was, say, nine bucks, that's a three X from where it is, but then it doubles or trebles off the back of huge news, all of a sudden you've got a six X. Now, I think this can hit 30 bucks with relative ease if one of these things happen. If they don't, maybe not. Um, but what do you guys think? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you're a returning viewer, hit the subscribe button. Um, these videos make you money, so you don't want to miss them. And guys, let's just, we're going to talk about the uh, what this year has brought as well. But before I do, guys, if you want to see the coins I own, go to copymycrypto.com. I share my portfolio on that site. <clears throat> I share every time I buy or sell a coin on that site. I have tutorials for the members. Anyone that's brand new to crypto, which a lot of the members are, they can learn how to trade and everything else on those tutorials. Same ones I send friends and family. We have a huge history of success on the channel. Public record, this spreadsheet. No one in 2020 spoke about Phantom. I did a Udemy course all about it. I said it would 100x. There is not a YouTuber on the planet it was speaking about Phantom in 2020, calling it, you know, one of the best coins for uh, the bull cycle other than me. And when I find the next one, I will go on the site. I'll tell the members about it. I won't do a Udemy course. Um, I'm just going to go onto my site, tell the members what I'm getting in on, why I'm getting in on it, what gains I think it can have, what percentage of my money it's going to be. And they can copy along. They can make those gains. If you want to take the work out of it for yourself uh, this coming year, you can do that. Go to the site right now read through it, and you can check it all against the YouTube channel's history, no problem. Um, guys, last thing. So what, what's happened this year? We've had VCs plowing into crypto. Um, you know, we saw Horn Ventures, Hound, Horn, um, raise 1.5 billion. Um, and they're looking to invest in every layer of the Web3 tech stack. Uh, so that is going to be huge money coming into the markets. Um, Huawei Global launched a one billion fund uh, in June, and again, it's going to be focused on DeFi and Web three projects. Uh, the new fund was designed to identify and invest in promising blockchain projects across a range of crypto subsectors. <clears throat> they will focus on providing liquidity investments to help DeFi projects get up and running as well. You had MBA Top Shop creator create a $725 million fund um, to support its development of its Flow blockchain. Uh, again, Flow continues to uh, add to its capital. Dragonfly Capital as well launched a $650 million fund. Uh, the funding was supported by Tiger Global and a bunch more. Uh, the funds will be used for DeFi, Metaverse, and blockchain gaming startups. Fireblocks raised 550. Um, Binance Labs earmarks 500 million for Web3. All these things happened. Yuga Labs 450 million. Polygon 450. Huge amounts of money. All year this has happened. Insanity. But this money is all going to filter into crypto over the next couple of years. 
And right now, it will probably be doing more in terms of more vital investments will be happening now than a year, than last year. Fundamentally, because everything is lower. So the success of the investments this year will bring the investments they all these VCs make this year will be way, way, way greater in terms of returns than the ones they made last year. It's just a fact. Uh, because now is the best time to invest because it's a bear cycle. Um, so we'll see huge returns for some of these. Um, and what have we learned this year, guys? What have we actually learned? Number one, I think the biggest thing everyone should realize from this past year, too much leverage wrecks everyone. It doesn't matter if you are a successful trade, like a, a highly experienced successful trader. It doesn't matter if you're a beginner. When there's too much leverage, it damages the entire. It, it, it damaged the person that's got too much leverage and it can damage the markets to a contagion event. We saw it with Terra where the leverage was out of control oh, through, well, yeah, the Terra UST situation. You know, we've seen it with FTX. We've seen it with Celsius. We've seen it with BotFi. We've seen it with Voyager. All these things have happened this year. And the reason that they happened is a lot of them, we, or all of them, certainly the majority, were using customer funds to then leverage on trades and they got those trades wrong. That's the majority of what happened. So if you are a trade or if you are a crypto investor, you're looking to start trading, leverage will kill you. Be, be so careful. Um, that's got to be the biggest thing that everyone realizes from this past year. Um, because you can't look, look, bull cycles, everyone forgets that during a bull cycle as well. Everyone starts going crazy on leverage in a bull cycle. But at some point, that bull cycle has to end. And in crypto, it's fast and it's dramatic. Bitcoin is down like, in you know, stupid amounts from its all-time high. It's all-time high of 69 grand. It's, at, it's knocking around, what, 16 grand? Come on. So there's always going to be a market rally. There's always going to be a market crash. But when it's bull cycle time, don't go crazy on leverage because if the market turns on you, you will get wrecked. We've seen it happen with these huge companies. And of course, it's happened a ton of times with individuals. So the key thing, folks, is just remember that. Remember that. Um, and news, the second thing is news moves markets. Crypto is not in a bubble by itself. We have watched crypto market react heavily towards everything going on with the Fed throughout the year. We've watched the crypto market react heavily to an Elon Musk tweet. We've watched the crypto market react heavily to the news stories around all these crashes as well, for obvious reasons. They've, they've directly affected the markets. We just we've got to understand news cycle stories will highly affect markets and more and during a bull cycle, that can be so great and it can be so brutal during a bear cycle. Again, something to remember um, because we, you know, we're going to be experiencing them forever. So don't forget it. News, news affects markets. Start learning about those news, uh, those news stories and why they have an impact on crypto. Um, but we're at the start of 2023 and while it's going to be a bear cycle probably for the whole year, build positions for a year in anticipation of the next bull cycle. It's going to be exciting. Uh, that's it for me, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.